Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the ASI 0361 Automatic Soap Dispenser. Get a perimeter shot of it. In general, this is a 27 ounce capacity liquid or lotion soap, synthetic detergents antibacterial soaps containing PCMX or Trilostan with a viscosity with a viscosity viscosity range between 5 and 3500 millipascal or centiploys um, that's important uh, to deviate from the general aspect you want to make sure the soap you're using is within that range um, otherwise the unit will not function. Powered by either one 9 volt battery or six double A's. Okay. Operates automatically with this RF sensor that's down here in the bottom. Tamper resistant soap level viewing window. That would be this. Okay. Dimensionally, let's go over that next. And there is a link below this video to the cut sheet, which shows everything important dimensionally about it. There's also a link to the instructions, uh, which we'll go over next. But the cut sheet first. From ASI, their cut sheet shows this at 4 and 5 eighths wide. That appears to be right on. A projection of 4 and 7 sixteenths. Right? An overall height of 9 and 15 sixteenths looks like so basically 10 inch mm -hmm. maybe a little bit heavy on 10 inch okay 10 and a quarter is what it's measuring at overall so specification let's go over that next surface mounted automatic liquid soap dispenser 27 ounce synthetic soaps as we said before 9 volt or 6 double A's either or you can use you need 9 volts so whichever works for you I don't have a determination on which to use uh, except that I have found I've never uh, I've only 9 volt is what I would opt for uh, in terms of this okay the installation aspect of this is important um, not only for um, compliance with handicap regulations okay but also you got to make sure that you're not you've got ample room below because this is you know a touch-free sort of sensor um, first of all regarding that minimum 10 inch dimension below this to whatever your vanity top would be or whatever might be underneath here And at least seven and seven eighths off of back away from the wall, and that's shown on the in, on the installation instructions themselves. Okay. Screws are included regarding the installation. You're going to get four screws and four plastic anchors. You'll be able to be here, be here, or here key slots on all of them so you'll be able to get that installed there's four of each four plastic anchors and then four screws it's pretty obvious how that's going to go get that lined up and there's a template included there's a link below this video as well to the template you'll want to tape that on the wall mark your holes and then remove the template and drill your holes is how I'd go about it now um, that covers the general information regarding uh, this item in a, in a very summary sort of fashion. Uh, from this point forward, it's going to be going through the installation instructions step by step. If you're not interested in how to go about installing it, then this would be where the, uh, this would be the last stop of the train. Okay, installation instructions. You're going to get with the unit installation instructions. Looks like a lot of reading. It's really simple and straightforward. That's just the bottom line. I've installed this several times and they're easy to install. Uh, if you pull that up, 
uh, you'll see section one are the specifications. We've discussed that. Dimensionally, we've discussed it. Yeah, speaking dimensionally, there is a uh, discrepancy between the, oh, you know what, never mind, forgive me, I've been reading it wrong all along. It's 10, it's 10 and 5 sixteenths tall. I would, the dimension I was looking at earlier was, was the location of the mounting screws, forgive me. Um, it's 10 and 5 sixteenths overall height, that is correct. There is no discrepancy, forgive me. Um, dimensionally, we talked about the capacity, 27 ounce. Six uh, double A's or a one or a single nine volt. We'll go over that in a moment. Operating um, minimum and maximum sorts of thresholds regarding um, room temperature, time sensing delay between a half and one second. Meaning that when you place your hand under, it's a half to one second delay before you're delivered soap. Detection range is 11 plus or minus two centimeters. So. For those of us who grow up on the imperial system, 11 divided by 2.54, I believe. So about 4 and 3 eighths of an inch. The amount of soap volume is preset between 1 and 1.5 and milliliter. And then the viscosity range that we spoke about earlier. Okay. Step 2 uh, is the item list. You have your, obviously your cover, your back plate, your soap uh, container or tank, and then the electronics and the battery harness. Uh, that's all pretty common. You're gonna have what they call a key. We'll go over that in a moment. It's a dogging key, not a dogging key. It's just a key to lock, to open, and then to relock the front cover when you're filling it or servicing it. Installation instructions, the installation instructions, the template, the soap dispenser itself, the plastic anchors, the screws, and then the lock that's installed in the unit itself, which is here. Step uh, three shows those dimensions, minimum 10 inch, and then seven and seven eighths away from an outside wall. You don't want the RF reader to catch people as it's walking by, is why that dimension is there. Uh, step four, same thing, minimum 10 inch, very important. Now step five, that's gonna get into the installation uh, that requires um, your template. Tape the installation template at appropriate location on the wall. Be sure that you're in compliance with ADA regulations. Uh, back to the cut sheet. The unit is surface mounted to wall or partitioned by means of two number eight screws, which are included. Recommended installation for general utility is 42 inch to 46 inch above the finished floor. Minimum 10 inch margin between the countertop and the bottom of the unit. The mounting template is provided. That's all straightforward, okay? Template is attached to the wall. You're gonna drill your holes as required. They're referring to the top set of four holes, okay? You'll get your template taped down. Well, you're going to want to get this taped down to the wall, okay? And what they're saying here is there's lots of, lots of holes drilled on this, but the circles indicate where you're going to be drilling for your holes, okay? These two holes here. These two holes here are what's referred to on the template. Insert the four screws into the anchors. Partially screw in. They say remove the template at that point. Makes sense to me. I kind of mark it and then remove the template so I'm not tearing the template as I'm drilling through it if I need to refer to it later. You will unlock the unit. You'll use the key. Be careful because this is plastic. Um, you don't want to strip anything out. There's a little indicator there to the padlock that shows lock. Insert your dogging key. Rotate it in the dire direction of it being unlocked. 
And at that point, it comes out. You can see that there's a little protuberance there, which, mod which works in conjunction with that keyhole. So you'll be able to insert that back in and lock it up. Everything comes out. At this point, you'll be able to open the unit. I just squeezed a little, a little here, and then got my hands in there. You'll be able to get this attached to the wall at this point. Okay, and then you've got, then you're in the home stretch, basically. Now, the access to the battery pack is over here. It says push so that you can remove, not remove, but well, remove. And you've got a battery harness that's going to come out. Okay, so you can use the harness for the six double A's or you can remove it here and plug your nine volt battery directly into it regardless um, you know I'm I've never run into it but I would if I wasn't using this which I usually don't um, you're gonna want to store this in a safe place should you later on down the road need it load it up with your installation there okay Hang it on the wall, tighten the screws, first of all. Get it on the wall, then tighten the screws. That's, that's what has to happen. The soap tank goes back into the housing. And you're in really good shape at that point. So step five basically says at this point, you close the cover, you lock it, then you're done. Well, step six is the operation instructions, so we're not going to lock it back together. Step six, open the, case, open the casing with the key. We've already got it open. Remove the cover from the battery box. Insert your batteries. You're going to want to put your battery cover back on at that point. Hard to do that backwards. There it is. It easily snaps in. I <laughs> doing it in reverse though is a little bit difficult. Snaps back in. You're going to want to remove. Okay, remove the uh, insert. Uh, remove the cover. Put your batteries in. Put it all back together. Remove the soap container. Fill it with your soap, close it up, any soap that you've spilled, clean it completely, okay? Place it back into your housing, into your soap dispenser. Wait five seconds before you do anything, before you put your hand underneath there. You're going to want to close it up first, little hook on there snaps it in place, keeps it up, your key, carefully lock that up, here's a part that you're not going to want to lose, wait five seconds, then place your hand under the dispenser, the LED will turn on, and the dispenser will release the portion of the liquid soap, for the first time, you're going to need to do that about four times to prime the system, okay, for refilling the liquid soap in the container, always remove the container completely from the housing and never fill it, uh, pardon me, and fill it. Never fill when the container is still in the dispenser housing. Put the palm of uh, user instructions, palm of your hand goes below, the sensor will activate and the motor will pump one to one and a half milliliters of liquid soap. If you need more soap, do it again. Just repeat, wait one second between Do not scoop soap from the nozzle. You don't want to touch this. Just let it come down as you could damage the, the installation. Installation check. Check your work. Make sure it's firmly attached to the wall. Uh, make sure that this is closed up and locked. Your batteries are installed. Um, if the red LED light flashes four times, 
it indicates normal function. Make sure the soap, the soap dispenser is locked properly with the included key. Um, the volume of the soap can be adjusted. There is the ability inside of here to adjust that, and you'll need an extremely small screwdriver. And I've never adjusted it. It just works fine. But should that need to be the case, Mm, okay, well, this view doesn't really help us. Too, well, it does, actually. Inside, inside of here, right here at my fingertip, there is a very small Phillips screw, like a .5 size, a very small size, that you'd be able to insert your screwdriver into and adjust it. Access is through here. Okay. The sensing distance is preset. If adjustment is necessary, proceed as follows. Use a small screwdriver, insert into the small hole at the bottom, turn clockwise to increase the sensing distance, turn counterclockwise to decrease the sensing distance. So you're going to adjust you know, this dimension here. Be very careful. It looks like to be a plastic screw that's inside of there. Okay. Again, the volume is, you would not, you're not going to adjust the, the quantity of soap being dispensed. If you need more, you'll just do it a second time. Uh, step 10 talks about just some drips and drabs about what's important. Ensure that no bright light source is aimed or reflected at the sensor from below. Use fresh liquid soap each time. Make sure everything's cleaned before you do it again. Do not dilute the soap unless you're using concentrated soap. You don't want to, the, the motor is not designed for anything other than that viscosity range. Don't get it wet, the entire unit. The electronics wouldn't survive that. Um, if the dispenser is out of order and your batteries are known to be good, contact your distributor. Troubleshooting. Um, which I've never had to actually troubleshoot. They seem to always work the first time. But if the LED does not indicate, check the batteries. Also check the cover of the sensor down below for any sort of stain that would be there. You, it could be uh, you know, impeding its ability to sense. Clean the unit, check the sensor distance. If adjustment is necessary, refer to parts three and four. Uh, refer to step nine. LED flashes when unit is not used. Batteries need to be changed uh, is the bottom line with that. Sensor is, or, or the sensor could be activated constantly. Uh, clear up, you know, anything that might be triggering it. If, that, if both of those fail, then it needs to go back for replacement or repair. No soap discharge, discharges, discharges when the motor is running. Obstructed. Uh, soap valve path. You're going to want to clean that out. Check if the soap is not liquid enough or the tank is empty. Viscosity needs to be within the range. Insufficient soap is released. The soap has been hardened. It's old soap. Use the unit for several times or remove the soap container, wash it thoroughly, refill with new soap. Or the soap nozzle could be obstructed. Wash soap container and then use the unit continuously until a normal quantity is dispensed. You're basically going to want to, you know, clean this pathway out. Okay. For the cost of the item, it is it is a very nice, reliable item. There's no, there's certainly no question about that. I've had really good success with these. In addition to that, you know, just really good success with ASI products in general. putting the soap container back in at this point. Very self-contained motor inside of here with the apparatus maintenance free. Nothing else to do but enjoy the hands-free usage of a soap dispenser. ASI is a full line manufacturer of 
all things commercial bathroom related. Um, not only automatic soap dispensers, which are everywhere and have been for a very long time, but everything that you'll see in a commercial bathroom from low usage like uh, retail store uh, bathrooms with your grab bars and your mirrors and your paper towel dispensers, toilet paper dispensers, all the way up to, you know, airport sort of volume, airports and movie theaters and hospitals, grab bars, mirrors, uh, everything industrial, stainless steel, multi-unit, jumbo roll, paper towel, uh, uh, toilet paper dispensers, and everything across the board. I am a uh, very uh, uh, big fan of ASI across the board, very good technical support, excellent customer service, good shipping lead times, and value for the dollar I think is, is, is exceptional. So, if you have any questions on the ASI 0361 Automatic Soap Dispenser or any other ASI product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.